Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the debut episode of Flesh Wound Farce. I am the world's first and only combination trivia host and professional wrestling announcer, Chilean Desette, that currently resides in Southern California, Ozzy V. And with me, as always, on this program, as you see from the Northern Bay Area, is Greg. Say hello, Greg. Hey, hey, how's it going, Ozzy? I'm doing fantastic, and I just need to specify when I say Northern Bay, Northern Bay, California. I don't want to assume uh, somebody thinks we're in New York or anything like that. As we would have accents, though, wouldn't we? Anyhow, Todd, producer, how you doing? Chilling? I am chilling. Excellent. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this debut episode. And just because I'm wearing a Spaceball shirt, I didn't even realize I grabbed a shirt out of the closet of Spaceballs. We're not talking about Spaceballs today. We're talking about Repossessed. It is the month of October, the month of Halloween. So we're going to have a few Halloween uh, farce comedies. We're going to watch. We're going to review. We're going to talk about them. And I'm glad that you're joining us here, whether it be video or audio, either way. Now, today, as I mentioned, we are talking about Repossessed. This 1990 film is a parody of the famous horror movie, The Exorcist. Linda Blair plays a housewife who becomes possessed, or rather repossessed, by the devil while watching TV. I just got a cut right there. I apologize. And I don't mean cut right there, an actual like, oh, Todd, producer, cut right here. No, I got to stop this synopsis right here real quick. Because this movie was the devil the original was a demon or was it actually the devil because was, i saw the was, exorcist when it was remade i'm sorry re-released in the theaters like back in uh like early 2000s uh more like 95 was it, it 95 was, that it was released in theaters yeah. so i remember seeing it in wow. the theater i know it wasn't 1995 are you sure there wasn't another re-release the version you haven't seen i'd have to look up um no, no, no. I'm not talking about like a remake. I'm talking about the original. No, no. The version okay. you never seen was the version of The Exorcist that they uh, added. Like it was basically an, an extended cut. So for the, so I don't even know if it was an anniversary, but they added the footage, some extra footage, like the spider walk and some other cool yes, things. Yes, I that, remember the spider okay. walk specifically. Okay. So yeah. So I apologize, but like that was a demon. This was the devil. That was Pazuzu. Pazuzu. That's he. I saw it was if nearly 20 that. years ago for me. <laughs> so continue with the synopsis. Leslie Nielsen plays Father May I, who gets called to exercise the intrusive being. Now, some of the other cast has mentioned Linda Blair, Leslie Nielsen. You also have Ned Beatty there, also known as Otis from Superman and also from Deliverance. Todd tells me I've never seen it. Can't speak to that. So this is the first time I've seen this movie on unedited because i saw it on tbs a long time ago because i could i never saw this vhs or dvd anywhere you know at the time of blockbuster whatever so this is my first time seeing it in its theatrical form and i thoroughly enjoyed it how about you guys well we Ozzy, we had talked about uh, biodome not too long ago oh, and no. how oh, no. something is dated and and it's it's hard and I can't I can't enjoy it. Um, I've realized something when it comes to films that that pride themselves on on going to a level of stupid. Uh, and I think that this this movie prides itself on its its stupid level. When you when you decide to go into the uh, sea of stupidity, you can't just dip your toe in. And I think that's what Biodome did. I think it mm. dipped its toe into it. And didn't fully embrace it. This movie, man, it dove headfirst into stupid, <laughs> and and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Like it was fantastic. Some of the jokes were were definitely dated, and I had to look up some of them <laughs> to understand what they meant. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, no, there there was there was a lot of fantastic stuff about the movie. Um, I don't know if we want to go into detail right now or just a quick synopsis of my thoughts. Just a quick, quick recap of your thoughts and we'll get to a deeper dive. Yeah, yeah. So so all in all, it was my first time watching it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Had a good laugh. Todd, it was, you know, I haven't seen it. it two things real quick. Exorcist re-release was 2000 so that's what right. it was okay. that's what i saw uh, and um this came out in 1990 yes, i remember i remember going and seeing it in the theater whatever september day it was um and i loved it then i loved it when it, i had it on home, on home video but i haven't watched it in probably 20 years 
So I was kind of worried if it was going to hold up, but I loved it still. Um, I forget about the R-rated material because, like you you mentioned, you'd seen it cut. I just don't remember like there being nudity in some of the jokes, but it's been 20 years. so Right. I I thought it was tamer. My memory had it tamer in my head. Right. Uh, I just loved how, Greg, as you mentioned, going diving full head on with stupidity. It's very similar to Airplane in that sense where, (laughs) I mean, we'll go into detail a little bit, but one specifically where I was dying was a close up on Father May I's face and his head squishes into it and he just pushes it back. Doesn't say a word and just gives a look like it. That's, that's the perfect, like he knew what, or whoever directed, they knew what needed to be or how much of it was needed and they didn't just overdo it because somebody overdo it, they would have like, you know, said something or whatever, but it was just that look, that annoyed look that just nonverbal, you know, it's well, even when you overdo it, like the, the tire damage moment where they back <laughs> up and there, there's t- for those who haven't seen it, there's a spike strip and it says if you do not reverse tire damage. So they reverse and a bunch of tires fall from the sky and like, <laughs> fall on them. That would have been funny, but they took it that extra step. And the next scene, you see this tire rolling by with completely <laughs> different characters. That was the icing on the cake. That was the diving head first into the sea of stupidity. Definitely felt uh, like watching a live action cartoon. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's what makes these movies uh, so hilarious. I do have a, a, a trivia bit, kind of a joke that might have went over over everyone's head sure in the in the original exorcist linda blair plays reagan in this one she plays nancy nancy reagan that's what oh <laughs> oh no kidding yeah. that's brilliant and that in case you haven't seen that it, that's correct the original actress who played uh, I'm, linda uh, blair linda she blair but played uh, reagan reagan in the, in the original exorcist plays the same, not the same role, but the same role, but different name. So that's and, supposed and if, to be like that, which and, I love. And if Pugs is, li- is watching, there's a debate if it's Reagan or Regan, but for this joke, it's Reagan. <laughs> it would make the most sense. Yeah. Reagan. Okay, you want another trivia bit? Um, Absolutely. Okay. Um, when Father Marin's like talking to the cl- or Father Marin, that's the original. <laughs> Father May I is talking to the class. Um, Linda Blair's in the in the front row, but she's wearing glasses and has a different outfit and is just like basically sitting there playing a different part. I don't know if you noticed that. I did not. So one of the the bits that I uh, uh, timing for this movie uh, was was a bittersweet thing. Uh, joke timing, fantastic. Like the narrative when they're at the church and uh, you, you see they're they're talking about. Um, walking the street and then it pans by street walkers uh waiting in line for the church like the narrative fitting with the visual but with two different contexts brilliant but uh then you got like timing issues like with the age of the joke um like i said i had to look up something <laughs> I had a military guy uh going to confession and uh, talking to his lawyer i'm guessing that was something about oliver north um had had no clue who that was uh, <laughs> until I looked everything up. So unfortunately, some of those jokes do get lost. Uh, but, but then man. at the same time, like right before that happened, you had the big line for confessions and then the express line, eight sins or less. That, right. It's still, right. I mean, you know, with supermarkets. And surprisingly, some jokes that were meant for its era, funny enough, hold true today. Um, like, the the thing where they're in the new studio and it has the new TV lineup where it's got the new Beverly Hills and the new, you know, whatever. It's got the new different uh, everything of older shows. And you look at things today and you're like, oh, well, that joke still holds. <laughs> they're still rehashing the new MacGyver and the new. <laughs> it's, and and it's, it's so subtle that that's what makes it even more brilliant it's this it's the subtleties and the details that they didn't feel the need to you know it again like just enough like still they were still they were able to overdo but it was just to the right amount 
Right, right. And there's some jokes that we've forgotten about that were were comedy tropes that that I I forgot that I missed, such as chase scenes in which you plow through a fruit cart uh, out of <laughs> Or the shadow jokes that we've lost track of where, you know, you got the shadow in the background that does something stupid. You know, like, I feel like this movie brought back a lot of great feelings of, of old comedy that, that we've sadly uh, lost track of. And just a quick little, I mean, bit of trivia inside joke here. So when they... Uh, the evangelist is pushing the exorcist to the network executives and they say hope you don't mind doing a deal with the devil and the executive says how do you think love boat got on the air <laughs> so check this out the writer and director was bob logan bob logan was credited by writing the story for episode one for the love boat mm. oh no kidding that's, that's awesome funny. so it's a great callback by the director there now, correct me if I'm wrong, but the son of of Linda Blair, was he not one of the stars of that movie? Like, the repeated <laughs> callback to the original joke of 20 bucks says it's PMS. My <laughs> God, I haven't laughed so hard with that re repetition of a joke. The, the entire movie that had me rolling uh, just from start to finish. <laughs> says at the very beginning he that particular actor that son i i have the full cast in front of me but i i can't get to the actual role like it's not being listed as um the son it, he's uh actually it's um it is uh ned ned is his name uh the actor's name is benji tahil yes so he looked very familiar to me. I just found found him here, and that's who it was. He's the kid from Homeward Bound. No kidding. Because he looked familiar. I'm like, dude, that face looks so familiar. <laughs> it's bothering me. And then, yes, Homeward Bound. He was the kid that uh, that had the golden retriever. That like that was his dog. Gotcha. Huh. That was bothering cool. me so much because it's almost like uh, in in Spy Hard. When you see the Dennis the Menace character, mm -hmm. there's just like a contrast because you saw him as the kid in that movie. And then now he's like, it's complete opposite with the kid going back to like, I guarantee it's it's BMS. Can you help me find my dog? Like, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> that's and what killed me. The way he delivers with not, not anger, not fear not uh disgust but he's just informing his dad at one point in time mom's humping the priest like <laughs> so brilliant like he was such a great role in that that film absolutely and the daughter looked familiar as well but i'm she only had repossessed and moonwalker to her credit so Maybe Wait, you watch a lot Jackson of movies. Moonwalker? Excuse me? Is that Michael Jackson Moonwalker? Yes. Segment. Oh, yeah, it is Michael Jackson's oh, Moonwalker. Oh, man. <laughs> I was an actress for a couple of things. Oh, what'd you do? Moonwalker and Repossessed. Oh. Michael Jackson's Moonwalker? Yeah. Oh. And what was the other one? <laughs> Repossessed. <laughs> oh. That didn't do well, did it? No. <laughs> and that's what was something I was thinking, like towards the end of the movie, when like again, just further pushing the end envelope, I just kept thinking, because this was released in 1990. So I'm thinking, Todd, you can you can uh speak on this. If this movie came out in 84, 85, I think it would have been a lot more popular. Mm -hmm. I think it would have been closer to The Exorcist. Um, but the one thing is, <clears throat> this did come out a month before Exorcist 3, so they were kind of still cashing off that. Got it. Because it seems like a lot of the... It was like classic 80s slapstick humor. It felt yeah, like, if it, especially with Leslie Nielsen. Then I think that was a year, like that was be, starting to be a time when 
things started to shift away from that. Right, right. Like and they the even had gun 33 and a third versus the original. Yeah. Right. And they even had the classic montage in the film. I mean, everybody's got to have a montage during that era. Exactly. Yeah. And it seems like this, this was just released at, at the tail end of that. And unfortunately I think it's, it suffered because the, I mean, it, it had a lot of feeling as, as airplane did, you know, a lot of people remember airplane. I love to ask people what's the funniest movie you've ever seen. A lot of people say one of them was, is Airplane. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those same types of jokes were in this movie, but didn't seem they were like ripoffs. They seemed still original jokes, but of that variety. And I think that was a lot that was missed out on when, you know, here comes 1990. Oh, another parody. You know, I think that's, <laughs> that's what it, it felt like. I'm sure to a lot of people and, and, to your point, Todd, when it was The Exorcist 3, I mean, maybe you can speak on this because I'm not a horror movie guy. What was the anticipation around the the third Exorcist movie after two had already been released? Um, Since everyone hates two, people were so, looking forward to there this you one. Go. But I love two, but I mean, Linda Blair is beautiful in that one. So, When did the second <laughs> Exorcist come out? Um, Exorcist 2, I want to say it was 81... Which now I'm going to confirm though, because yeah, I realize I have a computer too. Well, but <laughs> because my point being is that if this movie had come out oh, after wow. like a few years after The Exorcist, it was '77. I thought it was it was later. The original seventy two. Yeah, the original original is seventy three, um, and the sequel is seventy seven. Wow. See, so essentially this movie i mean i understand that there was two movies already but it was you could say that specifically a parody of the first original like people are going to think oh this is a parody of the exorcist so if, if this was released like in 82 because airplane was released in 80 yeah. that obviously hit with a lot of people if this was released in 81 or 82 that would have been I think all, not as popular because we'll get into the rate. How to be more rated. popular than top secret. <laughs> right. So, but I, I didn't mention rating and I'll just start, start things off because your dog wants me to start with the ratings. So I would say it's a solid for me, three and a half stars as I would, as I would rate it because there were some moments. Now, one of the things I'd like to use as a good gauge when I'm watching a movie, like for me, is if it's a five star for me, a five star movie means I'm not paying attention to anything else except this movie. And I'm 100% invested from start to finish. But if there's like some, if, if there's room in my head for another thought to be like, hey, wait, is the recording using video or just audio today? Oh man, I got to set stuff up as the movie's still going. So, that's where I took a star off and I don't feel at the end of the day, you know, if I'm just throwing this out there, you know, if at the end of my days, somebody has a giant book, they're like, Hey, so you gave repossessed four stars. Are you sure about that? I'd probably second guess myself and think, you know what? I'd say three and a half because a three out of five stars for me is not enough laughter but there was plenty of laughter in this one for me though. It's a good in between point that I would say just almost four, but I'd say three and a half for me. How about you, Greg? Oh man. You know, it's tough because there's, there's my initial instinct of it. My, and, and I think I'm going along the same uh, route as you are in, in certain ways, because my, my initial thought is four stars. Um, because I was, it was fun to go back to that style of comedy. And I, I hadn't seen a movie like that in some time. Um, and so I think there was a lot of nostalgia that, that welled up within me for it. Um, but if I took a step back and I really thought about it, you know, I, I would probably go three and a half, um, but it, like you said, it's close to a four, but it just didn't. I never had a moment where, because I was, I, I 
I hope my boss isn't listening. I was watching it while at work. Um, <laughs> I did not have a moment in which um, you're totally fine. I laughed out loud, and oh, there were some moments I didn't realize what was in that film, and I couldn't. <laughs> really been fine. But uh, yeah, yeah, there weren't those moments where I laughed like out loud, couldn't control myself, which is harder to be fair when you're by yourself. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'd say a solid three and a half. Wow, I, it's across the board. I'm a three and a half also. Oh, look at that. Um, but how have we not talked about calling the action in the final exorcist? Calling the action, you're right. Because we had Jesse Ventura and Mean Gene Oakland. Oh, have done something. <laughs> that that was a complete surprise to me. I, I didn't remember that at all. I remember um, popping hard when I saw it theatrically. Because <laughs> it was 90, so still, so. Sure. It totally and, worked. I loved it. And we get this joke. Of the uh, yeah, we don't use steroids anymore. Uh, we <laughs> don't any use any less. less. <laughs> I was dying. I was like, "Wow, <laughs> uh, way to go, Bravo!" Loved it. And <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, hope you loved the movie, and I hope you enjoyed us discussing Repossessed. We could all, I definitely say, recommend watching it. Greg, Todd, I think you guys agree absolutely. Sure. Recommend mm-hmm. watching it if you have a chance. We don't. I mean, we all had copies available to us but you can how rent, do we know of any streaming or rent you, you can rent it or purchase it on a uh, voodoo um you can check some of the other places to buy vod it's really cheap it's like six bucks to buy honestly you're paying like three to rent it so six bucks to buy yeah. a movie you can go back to i think once a year it's a good halloween parody yeah. you can watch so absolutely recommend it and then if you'd like to join us next week you definitely should we're going to be discussing young frankenstein mm-hmm. I know previously on another show we mentioned Gremlins 2. We're going to hold that off because we're going to be talking about Dracula Dead and Loving It in a couple weeks. So I think Frankenstein, Dracula, it fits with the month of October. And I hope you enjoy your October celebration of month-long Halloween. You flesh wound fiends, I'm sure you love it. And even if you're just watching this because you like hearing or seeing people talk about funny movies. Either way, enjoy your October. Enjoy your week. Greg, Todd, anything else you'd like to leave? with everybody check Just out everything <laughs> <laughs> check out everything else we got going on uh this month of october and so. he's specifically referring to flesh wound you got flesh wound horror what else what are the flesh wound programs oh, are there todd we got flesh wound horror we got flesh wound true crime we got fe- flesh wound analog nightmares that is specifically about vhs films not available on, on any other format um good flesh wound juniors for the for the kids <laughs> for the kids <laughs> actually don't let your kids listen <laughs> <laughs> all right ladies and gentlemen you heard it there but as far as this program flesh wound farce will be back next week with the new episode where we just got again young frankenstein for greg todd i'm ozzy v and we'll see you next week right here on flesh wound farce